I die, uh, makey makey, or makey Mr. Makey. Um, so this uses permanent markers and isopropyl alcohol to create a really cool effect. And you can make it as blurry and funky as you like, or you can make it much simpler if you prefer. But we're gonna show you how to do that. We also have this really cool um, acrylic painted shirt. So all you need is acrylic craft paint to make this one. Um, and I'm gonna show you a way to make that paint a little more flexible and make it uh, not dry quite as quickly and bond to the fabric even easier than it normally would using some common household ingredients. So both of these shirts um, can be done on pretty much any shirt you have. And if you don't have like a completely blank t-shirt, just use the back, okay? You can just use the back of the t-shirt and make your Maker Camp t-shirt that way. Um, as far as colors go, white is always the easiest to work with, right? Um, but if you don't have a white t-shirt, colors will work. Colors work a little bit better with the paint, white works a little bit better, or light colors work a little bit better with the permanent markers. But it's really up to you. You can even do one idea on the front and one idea on the back if you're able. Um, do wash your shirts first. They'll just come out a little bit better. You'll get um, a better um, adhesion of the paint or dye if you wash your shirt first. Don't use fabric softener. If you didn't think to wash your shirt first, it's probably gonna be fine. Just give it a little extra time to cure and let everything set and make sure that you heat set your permanent marker before you try to wash it. And that basically just means iron it on high for a little bit or throw it in the dryer on high for about 20 minutes to make sure that that color sets. For your acrylic, you're gonna to wanna to just let it sit for a good couple of days, a week. Don't try to wash it right away. You want that paint to actually chemically cure and adhere to the fibers of your shirt. All right, both of these shirts need a stencil, okay? And a stencil is basically a way that we mask out areas where we don't want the paint to go and leave open the areas where we do want our paint or dye to go, all right? So we're gonna create a really simple stencil. Um, it's not hard to do. So, toss those over here. I have provided a PDF, okay, of our Mr. Makey stencil. And he's a pretty simple design, it says Maker Camp on there. If you have a printer, all you have to do is print that out. You can print it right onto copy paper. If you happen to have cardstock, that's a little sturdier and that's um, often a good choice. But if you don't have that, it's totally okay. If you have a digital cutter, like a Cricut, or a silhouette, you can transform that PDF into a cut file or I'll be uploading an SVG that you can use. So if you're making a bunch of shirts or you have crafty parents that have one of those vinyl cutters or craft cutters, awesome. Um, now, there are other things you can make your stencils out of. You don't have to just use paper. Some things that I like to use, these manila folders, okay? They're a little thicker, so if you can't print on cardstock, print onto paper, glue or tape your um, stencil onto this, and cut from both of them at the same time to get a little stronger stencil. Another great material that's probably around the house, you got an old cereal box or a cracker box or a granola box. Again, attach your paper stencil to this, cut through both at the same time, and you have a stronger stencil. This is especially good if you wanna use paint because copy paper can bubble and get all wrinkly if you use paint on it. It's a little tougher to do. You can still absolutely make it work, but it's a little harder. Now, if you happen to have any of these items around, you're in really good shape. Freezer paper is my very favorite thing to use for stencils. It's cheap, it's easy to cut, and it's got plastic on the back. So when you put it on a shirt and iron it lightly, it sticks to the shirt and you don't get any paint or anything going under your stencil. It's really nice. Unfortunately, it might not be so easy to get right now. I'm out of it too. Um, this is what I use for camps though, because I can cut on my digital cutter 20, 30, 40, of these pretty quickly and everybody has their own stencil to work with. Um, so if you have freezer paper, that's my personal favorite material. Then there's easy things like, this is clear contact paper, it's peel and stick. It's um, basically, it's a giant sticker. So it's like a clear plastic on the front and then it's got a um, paper backing. Let's see if I can do this. Yep, I can. All right, so it's got a 
No, I can't. <laughs> this is why I really should grow my fingernails. So you can see it separates. What's nice about this is this is nice and sticky. So it will attach to your shirt really well. Um, and again, you won't get any paint going under your stencil because that's something we want to avoid. The other nice thing is it's plastic. So no paint's going to soak through it. No, um, any other material's not going to soak through it. And if you're gentle, you can reuse this a couple of times as long as you clean it in between and put it back on its backing. So I really like contact paper. That's a good one. And it doesn't have to be clear like mine is. Any color will work for this. Um, again, if you have crafty parents who use digital cutters, they may have vinyl sitting around. If they have vinyl, you're all set. Vinyl makes a great stencil. They also sell stencil material either to hand cut or cut on a digital cutter. If you happen to have some around, golden, but not necessary. The other thing that you can use is those really thin, inexpensive, flexible cutting mats that they sell at like the dollar store. They usually sell them in like a pack of three. Um, if you take those and very carefully cut, probably more for older kids or parents, um, if you cut those, you get a nice reusable stencil that will last forever. So that's another nice option. But even if all you have is a printout of your stencil, you're fine, you'll be fine. You can definitely do this, okay? And you know what, if you're looking at this and you're like, I don't know, Mr. Makey's cool and all, but I don't really wanna do Mr. Makey, design your own, it's totally okay. Just, and I'm going to explain more about this later. You want to make sure that you have bridges, okay? And I'm going to show you closer up on that, and islands, because all this black part we're going to cut out, and you want to make sure that the rest of it is all attached. If it isn't all attached, you're going to end up with multiple pieces in your design. You're going to be trying to lay them down and tape them down and glue them down on your shirt. It just gets to be a little bit of a nightmare. So if you design your own thing, just you're going to want to think about that a little bit, or design something really simple like a star or a heart or the initial, you know, your first initial. Um, but you can design and draw your own stencil too, if you like. Um, I often will draw like little hats or bow ties for Mr. Makey to add to him after I've stenciled the main design, and that's fun to do. Let's talk about the other things you're gonna need today. All right, Get this out of the way. My desk is clean for the first time in at least a year. All right, four hour permanent marker shirt, obviously, Permanent markers, we're gonna need those, okay? Any brand will do. They're all a little bit different. These I picked up at, I don't know, Dollar General or something like that. You're obviously gonna need a copy of your stencil. You're gonna need either good scissors, okay? And for these, kid scissors, little scissors are actually better. Um, if you have scrapbooking scissors, they're great. Do not use mom's sewing scissors. I cannot say this to you more clearly. She's probably making masks for, you know, nurses. Don't go taking her, her sewing scissors. They're not good for paper. So find a pair of scissors. Smaller is better because it lets you get into the curves. This is a craft knife, um, also sold as an X-Acto blade if you want the name, name brand. Um, this is for older kids because you can cut yourself with this if you're not careful. Um, I would suggest if you're not used to using one, maybe wearing some leather gloves to protect your hands is a really good idea. You're also gonna wanna make sure that you have a ruler. Um, because as you're cutting straight edges, you want to be able to cut them nice and straight and the ruler is going to help you do that. You're also going to need a ruler to figure out where to put your stencil on your shirt. All right, we need some way to attach our stencil to our shirt. So you can go straight up masking tape, lay the stencil on, tape it down, good to go. But if you have some of this stuff, okay, spray adhesive is really handy here, especially if you're working with paper because you can spray this onto the back and stick it right to the shirt. It'll release when you're done, but it'll hold it in place really nicely. Whichever way you go, stick glue, tape, spray adhesive. The goal is just to make sure your stencil stays in place while you're coloring or painting, because if it shifts, you're going to get weird blurry lines and you're going to get a Mr. Makey that looks like he's in the TARDIS or something. You don't want that. For our permanent marker shirt, you're also going to need a little spray bottle and some isopropyl alcohol. The spray bottle can come from anywhere, an old bottle of hairspray. This one I had around for, I don't know, some other project. Um, you, know, you might have a little bottle for perfume or something like that. Doesn't matter. Anything just you, that you can repurpose. If you don't have a spray bottle, you can drip the alcohol on the shirt and get a really cool effect that way too. So it's not the end of the world if you don't happen to have a spray bottle around. Um, the isopropyl alcohol, 
I usually use a 70% isopropyl. If you have 50 or 90, you'll be fine. You might need to, you know, give it a little longer on the marker. Um, if you don't have isopropyl alcohol, you can test other things. Um, if mom and dad have uh, materials for making their own hand sanitizer, that can work. And in fact, I know some kids have used hand sanitizer for this project, and it will often do the job. Um, and the truth is, if you don't want to tie dye your shirt and have all the colors blend, you can just color your shirt and make it look awesome and be done. Totally up to you. It's your shirt. All right. So that's all the stuff for our um, basic stencil and for a permanent marker shirt. And that's the one that we're going to do first. Okay. That is the big tie dye one. Now for our paint shirt, you're going to need your stencil again, same thing. Um, but you're also going to need some acrylic paint. I have some metallics here that I like, uh, but any acrylic paint will work. Any craft acrylic paint will work. Uh, you know, the 99 cent stuff you get at the craft store, totally okay. Any color, if you have glow in the dark or metallics or something fancy, great. I don't suggest the glitter paints though. Sometimes the glitter doesn't stick so well to clothing after it gets washed and you may be disappointed. So just be aware of that. Um, if you're working on dark fabric, your acrylic paints, light color acrylic paints could be really handy for that. Um, now, acrylic paint can be kind of hard and it sets kind of hard on fabric. So a lot of people add a fabric medium. You may not have that sitting around though, right? If you don't, we're gonna make our own. So for that, you'll need a little bit of vinegar, some water and vegetable glycerin. We're gonna talk about these things and what they do a little bit later. If you don't have these, it's totally optional, not the end of the world. Add a little bit of water to your paint, it'll be okay. But you will get a slightly more comfortable shirt that adheres a little bit better if you use our homemade fabric medium, okay? So that's our supplies. That's our plan for what we're doing today. I think it's time to actually get started, all right? So let's jump right on in. All right, let's talk a little bit about our stencil here. Um, whenever you want to make a stencil, you want to be very thoughtful to make sure that when you cut out these pieces, the rest of your stencil stays together and that you don't lose pieces and have to like insert them later. So you'll see that we have little bridges here for the eyes and across to, for the, the M. We call those bridges and they connect to islands, okay? So that when we cut out all of this black space, we'll still have a stencil that's all connected in one piece. Now, the thinner your bridge, the more delicate it is, okay? So if you're having trouble cutting out your stencil and these are breaking on you when you're using it, just widen them, just give them a little more space. You won't get as much detail on your stencil, but at least it'll all hold together. And a lot of that's gonna differ depending on what material you're using too. Here I have the regular copy sheet of, um, you know, just printed onto a regular sheet of paper. Now this stencil, pretty disposable. It's not going to last for long. I would recommend this if you're doing the permanent marker um, application that we're doing today. It's not going to stand up really well to really wet materials, but in a pinch, it'll work. You can use your regular old scissors to cut a stencil like this. And to do that, you're just going to kind of fold an area, come in here, with your scissors, give yourself a starting point, and then just very, very carefully, okay, come around and cut out your stencil. Now this one's pretty easy. There's no really fancy cuts, okay? It's pretty much straight edges, so it's not too hard to do. These letters down here, you'll notice, we wanted to make sure that we had those bridges so that when we cut out the black space, we didn't lose like the center of our A, okay, or the center of our P or our R. These are probably the hardest parts to cut out if you're using regular scissors. So is this M way up here. If they give you trouble, you don't have to cut them out, okay? You can always just write on Maker Camp later in your own handwriting. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to do this. So that's kind of our simplest solution if you don't have a whole lot of supplies on hand. I like to use cardstock. It's a little stronger, so it's a thicker paper. And remember, you can also take your copy paper 
and attach it to something like an old cereal box or um, you know another material like a manila folder to make it a little thicker and that will give you a little more time when you're working with things like paint before you have to worry about the paint soaking through your stencil. Now if you're going to use a thicker material like that it's going to be challenging to do with your scissors. You may still be able to do it if you've got a nice sharp detailed pair of scissors like these. These are meant for scrapbooking and for detailed cutting. If you don't and if you have your parents permission I really like to use a craft knife, okay? There are a lot of different versions of these out there. Um, when you're using one, it is really helpful to have a ruler so that as you cut these straight lines, you can keep that nice and neat, okay? Like that. You also want to work on some kind of a surface. Like I'm working on my craft mat here. Um, if you don't have a uh, self-healing silicone craft mat, that's no big deal. You can put some, a uh, couple layers of newspaper, an old pizza box, or something like that underneath it to protect your table. But you can pretty easily go through this paper and onto your surface with one of these blades, and you really want to avoid that. Now, when you're working around circles, you're just going to kind of take your time Hold your pieces in place. Again, watching those fingers, right? We don't want to accidentally have any cuts. You want to apply firm pressure, okay? And you don't have to try to go all the way around because it was kind of turning my wrist. I'm just going to come from the other side and cut around on my pattern. And again, if you find something like a small jar that's about the right size to help you do that curve, that may be helpful. I'm going to use my ruler here for the straight portion again. Okay, you want to be very aware of those bridges. Okay, so be careful that you don't cut away your bridges. And again, you don't have to be perfect here. Okay, it's your shirt. I often will come back in with a pair of scissors or my craft knife and just clean it up once I get the big pieces out. Okay. Um, we're not shooting for this to be the most amazing stencil ever cut in the history of stencils. Okay, if you have that kind of detail-oriented uh, personality, and if you really uh, feel comfortable with a craft knife or with a pair of scissors, that is awesome. Help others out in your family. Um, but there you go. And you can see, I've got a little bit over here. It's not quite perfect. I can just come in with my knife and clean that up. Now, if you're new to using an X-Acto knife, you may wanna wear some gloves. And you see how I just made a mistake there? Okay, where I accidentally cut too far up. Oh no, I made a mess. Guess what? Easy way to fix that? A Little bit of masking tape. I can make whatever edge I want. I just come in here, apply my tape. Okay, fold it over, make myself a nice straight line. Press it down really well. And you know what, when I cut through the back, any extra tape will be gone. All right, so here's our shirt, okay? If you're using permanent marker, a white shirt is best to work on or a light colored shirt. If you're using acrylic paint, it really doesn't matter what you're using. We're gonna start with the permanent marker um, t-shirt because it's a little bit easier to do. Now, first thing you have to decide is where you're gonna put your stencil. On most adult shirts, it's about two and a half inches from the collar down to the top of the design and centered in the, in the middle. Now, that's gonna vary depending on your age. So if you're a teen or a child, the spacing may be a little bit different. The best thing you can do is get your favorite t-shirt, get out a ruler, and actually measure where the design is on that t-shirt, okay? So that you can uh, put it in a spot that you really like. At the end of the day, it's not the end of the world, depending, you know, where you want to put it. And if it doesn't end up perfectly centered, that's not a big deal either. Now, actually attaching your stencil, all right, if you have available um, spray adhesive, craft spray adhesive, spray the back of it and it will stick really nicely to your shirt. You could also use um, stick glue for some of these bridges. They're really the, the parts that you gotta worry about. Those little bridges there are where you're gonna potentially have your stencil lift. So a little bit of glue that can wash out or that won't permanently attach to your fabric can be really, really helpful. Now, 
you may not have that. If you don't have that, not a big deal. I'm just gonna move my shirt here. You can just go ahead and put your, sh your uh, design on. Again, I'm just gonna check with my ruler. Oh, that's not quite where I want it to be, down a little bit more. That's about right. Again, I'm not being super duper careful. I'm gonna fold my pattern in half and just eyeball where the tag is and just kind of center it, okay? And then bring it down and place it where I want it. Okay, now, if you don't have spray adhesive, use a little bit of tape, okay? Masking tape is a great option here. And just use that to attach your pattern in place because you don't want it to shift around once you get started. If that happens, then you might end up with a design that isn't so neat. Okay, so just go ahead and press your design down. I did put like a light coating of spray adhesive on this just to help stick it in place. Um, and I'm just gonna tack it into place. Now, another thing you're gonna wanna do, I have a little manila folder here. You can use a bit of cardboard, um, another cereal box, anything. You want to slide that in your shirt. Easier to go from the bottom up, but I'm working in a tight space here. Oh no, okay. All right. <laughs> You're gonna full put, just push that in under your stencil. And the reason we're gonna do this is because your permanent marker can actually bleed through the fabric of your shirt. So if you just put something in there kind of as a, as a wall, a barrier, you're not gonna get that to happen. Now, you might decide, hey, it sounds pretty cool if I can do a two for one, right? And end up with, oh, I got all kinds of cat hair from my shirt on it now. Um, you might decide that that's really cool, fine. I wanna see what happens if I get, you know, both the back and the front at the same time. It's up to you. I like it to be a little bit neater, so I'm gonna do it that way. I'm gonna flatten my shirt out here you're gonna have a lot more space to work at, maybe at the kitchen table or outside on a picnic bench in the backyard. I'm working in kind of a tight spot so I can film it. All right, so there we go. I've got my Mr. Makey stencil on my shirt. He's gonna be taped down so he doesn't move around on me. I've got a little bit of spray adhesive, a little bit of glue as well. That way I know he's where I want him to be. And I've got some, um, cardboard in between my stencil, my front fabric and my back fabric so that I don't end up with a bleed onto the back because I wanna do the back of my shirt with something else. All right, now this is very simple. If you have fabric markers, you may decide to use them for this, um, but we're gonna do kind of a nifty permanent marker um, tie dye. So I have just, these are the most inexpensive permanent markers I could find right now. I'm just gonna pick a color I like. I'm really into blues. And I'm just gonna come in here and you see how I'm just being kind of careful about my edge. I'm just gonna kind of trace the edge of my stencil, okay? I'm gonna do that with this blue. Now, because we're gonna do a kind of cool tie-dye, you can see I'm gonna hold the islands of my stencil as I go along, keep them in, in the right plot in place. Now, since we're gonna do a tie-dye with this, you may not want to do all one color because we're gonna use isopropyl alcohol, okay? We're gonna use isopropyl alcohol and it's going to make these colors bleed and spread out and mix up in really fun, cool ways. Um, so I'm actually gonna grab a different color, something really bright, and I'm gonna kind of fill in just because I'm experimenting, you know? I don't know what's gonna happen. It happens sometimes in life. You just don't know what's gonna happen. So I'm gonna just kind of play with it, use different colors. Now, if you don't want to do the tie-dye effect that we're gonna do in a moment, you can use fabric markers, you can use, uh, you know, metallic markers can be really fun for this. There's a lot of different ways you can go with it. Um, the one thing you do want to do, regardless of what method you use, is you're going to heat set your shirt when you're all done before you wash it. It's also a good idea 
If you're able to wash your shirt before you go ahead and do any of these treatments to it, okay, because you're gonna get a little bit better result. So I'm just gonna kind of continue here, tracing, coloring, and making my shirt. Okay, I have got my shirt colored. Okay, now a couple of things. Where I thought that maybe the two colors wouldn't blend together, I left a little space in there, okay? And you may wanna color your shirt a little more lightly than I did with mine. If you want a more pastel effect or if you don't want quite as an intense a color, that's okay. Um, so, and you might have to experiment a little bit. Think about what colors you're mixing. If you mix colors that are too different, you might end up with a brown in there. Um, so just, you know, play with it a little bit. And you'll notice that there's some blending already occurring because there's alcohol in the permanent marker already. Okay, so my tie-dye permanent marker shirt is dry. And here we go. Now, as you can see, I was pretty overzealous with my marker and my alcohol, and that's okay because I got really nice tie-dye effect, which is what I was looking for. Um, and I really, I really like that. Um, what I did was I let everything dry in the sun. You can use a blow dryer too, if you prefer, to get all that alcohol nice and dry. And then I just took a regular old black marker, okay? And I went in and I just traced along my stencil again to give it a little more definition. You could throw some googly eyes in there. Uh, you could add other uh, bling if you like, but I really like the way that some of these colors blended. And then what I did is I just colored, I actually sprayed this more after the fact and then colored it in with some black to really make it stand out. So I'm pretty happy with this shirt. I really like tie dye. Now that might be too much for you. That might be too blurry for you. That's okay. Here is another version. Okay, this one, I added a lot less marker. Okay, I left more white space as I was um, coloring. I did some geometric patterns, some polka dots here and some stripes here, and I added less alcohol as I went. I even kind of dripped some just in specific spots where I wanted color or where I wanted to blend more and kind of left other parts more dry. So if you like something with a little more control, if you like something that's a little more defined, just use less marker, use less alcohol, play with it a little bit. Now, if you're spraying it and you're like, oh my gosh, I just added too much, get out the blow dryer, dry it right away. That will stop the alcohol inks from spreading, that will stop the marker from spreading and slow down the process, okay? So there you go, those are our shirts. So that was pretty fun, right? I hope that you uh, made something really unique and creative. Um, I'm wearing mine. I really like my, my tie-dye version here. And of course, we also have our little more geometric version. You can do a lot of things with this. You can do squiggles. You can do camo. I've seen that done. You could keep it simple and then just decorate it and make it really unique. Um, so get out some Google eyes and some fabric glue and really go to town with it. Okay. Just, all right, so next up, we have our acrylic paint shirt. Um, so grab your paints, grab your vinegar and glycerin and your stencil, and let's get to work. Okay, so now we're gonna do our paint shirt using acrylics. For this, I used a contact uh, paper stencil. You could use vinyl too. Paper will work, you just have to be really careful when you apply the paint not to put too much because your paper can bubble. So you really wanna use the thickest substance you can. And if you have if you have the ability, use something that's got a little bit of a plastic to it. Uh, cardboard will also work pretty well for this. So when you apply a stencil like contact paper or vinyl, you don't wanna just peel the paper off the whole thing at once. It's kind of like a big sticker. But if you do that, these little bridges are gonna to get torn or they're gonna get tangled on each other. You wanna pull down a little bit of the tape, press your stencil, pull down a little bit more of the backing, press your stencil, and kind of keep going a little at a time. Patience really pays off for this. Now, the other nice thing about using something like contact paper is that if you're careful and you save that backing sheet, you can actually reuse this stencil a bunch of times. This, okay, now we have to prepare our paint. I'm gonna use these uh, metallic acrylics that I have sitting around. I really like them. Um, the problem with acrylic though, is it dries pretty quickly. 
uh, which isn't great when you're working with a stencil. It can be very rigid and kind of heavy on a piece of clothing um, when you use it. So that's not always comfortable for everyone. Um, so often if we were using regular uh, acrylics in our t-shirts, we'd mix a fabric medium in and you could buy that at the store. Or of course you can just use a pre-prepared fabric paint, but you may not be able to get your hands on that right now. That's okay because you can make your own version out of a couple simple items. The toughest to get is vegetable glycerin. This is actually the gel substance in plant leaves that holds onto water for them. People use it as a sweetener, they use it to um, moisturize their skin. It's good stuff to have on hand. You can get it at the pharmacy or at um, a health food store. Um, so I tend to have it around the house. I also use it for bubble making in the summer. It's really great for that. If you don't have it, you can just skip it in this recipe and not worry about it. Or you can try corn syrup. Some people use that. Um, the idea is just that it's supposed to stretch the paint and make it a little more pliable, um, make it last uh, wet longer so it doesn't dry as quickly, and let you put a little bit thinner coat so you don't get that heavy feel of acrylic on fabric. So that's all it's there for. You can use straight up acrylic. You don't have to mix a, a medium or anything into it, but if you have some vegetable glycerin or could get your hands on it, it's, uh, it's helpful. The other ingredient we're going to use is good old inexpensive white vinegar. The idea with the vinegar is that it helps um, change the pH of your fabric just a little bit. And by doing that, it actually kind of untwines the cotton a bit. And as a result, it lets the paint kind of get into that cotton better and fix a little bit better. It's very similar to using washing soda or um, ash before doing tie dye, if you've ever done that kind of a process. Uh, so we're gonna use just a tablespoon of vinegar. Okay, and this I think a lot of people have around the house. We're gonna do a tablespoon of glycerin. Right on in. And then I'm just gonna thin this out with a tablespoon of water. Some recipes call for more water than what I used. I like to thin out my paints um, separately just because you never know, each acrylic can be a little different. And if you end up with too liquidy a paint, you are gonna have it leak under your stencils and that's no fun at all, nobody likes that. All right, so I'm gonna mix this all up. There we go. And we're gonna add just a little bit of this to each of our paints before we apply them. Okay. All right, we're back with our Mr. Makey stencil. Just like last time, I put a little piece of cardboard or um, manila folder in there. And here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna make sure I have a piece of paper towel or a napkin nearby. Okay, I've got my paint. So I'm just gonna take my paint and I'm gonna load up my brush, but I'm gonna try and get a fair amount of paint off my brush and I can use my paper towel to kind of take more off too. I'm gonna to start in the center of the area I wanna stencil. And you see I'm using this, we call it a pouncing motion, okay? We're just kind of dabbing the paint on. We don't want to brush. If we brush, we could accidentally push the paint underneath our stencil. So we just kind of want to dab, 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 or pounce, 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 like pounce like a little kitten might pounce. Okay, and keep loading up our brush and just pounce, pounce, pounce. Okay, here we are with our Mr. Makey uh, stencil t-shirt and this we used acrylic paints on. I'm really happy with he came out, with how he came out. He looks kind of nice and vintage and superhero-y for me. You can see that, you know, the fa fabric's pretty flexible. Um, again, this is a dark fabric, so if I didn't want a vintage look, I could have gone over this again and given it a second coating. You just wanna make sure that you don't leave your stencil on too long with acrylics, because if you do, what will happen is the paint will kind of adhere to the stencil, and when you go to lift it, it can actually lift the paint or it can tear. Um, so just be careful about that. If you do thin 
um, coats and you do the pouncing method and don't lay on like a thick coat of paint, you should be fine. Um, when you go to remove the stencil, just be careful when you're removing it that you don't end up getting blotches of paint um, touching the shirt in different places. So you may want a little bit of help to do that. Sometimes it's, it's helpful with two people. And you can see down here, we got pretty good. I had a little bit, because uh, I went over a second time, I had a little bit go under here and here. So if I wanted to, I would just come in with a, like a black marker and just cover that up and you wouldn't even know it was there. Welcome back. I hope that your acrylic paint shirt came out great. Um, I do have some other ideas for you that I think you might enjoy if you want to try and take this a little bit further. One thing you can do is, and I'll post the link for you, there is a way to make your own spin art machine. You can use a drill that you have at home, or you can use an old box fan. This is one thing that we love to do at camp. Sometimes we'll just put paper plates on there and squirt in some washable tempera paint and make cr crazy works of art. Um, but you can also take your shirt, attach it to the inside of the spin art machine with the stencil on, and then splatter paint in there and get a really, really unique Maker Camp shirt. This is one of my personal favorites. And it's really up to you how much you want to mask it off. Some kid, kids really love that kind of explosion effect that it has, but you might want to mask it off even more. You can use plastic bags or newspaper or anything that you have on hand to do that. So this is a really fun um, shirt to do if you have access to an old box fan or something like that. Let's see. This is a great way to use a stencil, okay? It's just bleach watered down half and half with water. Okay, you have to have a dark shirt for this. It's not gonna work on a white shirt, obviously. Um, all shirts are gonna turn color a little bit differently depending on their dyes, but all you do is apply your stencil, put your bleach and water into a spray bottle, and spray it over your shirt. This you definitely wanna do outside. Mom will not appreciate it if you do it inside, okay? You'll make a mess. But if you do this outside, it comes out really well. And the cool thing is you can use a hair dryer or the sun to dry it quickly if you want like a very minor effect, not a lot of color change, or apply more if you want to get a real color change. Just don't use straight bleach because it can eat away at the fabric really quickly, especially if you're outside on a sunny day and you're going to end up with holes in your shirt. And that's not the thing that any of us want. Um, if you have those bleach pens that some people use for stains, you can use those to draw on your shirt too and add your name or write different messages or put something on top, whatever you wanna do. So bleach shirts are really fun and it can be cool to find different color shirts and see how they change once you bleach them out. Um, this is always a hit, always. Make sure you wash this well though before you wear it, okay? You don't wanna put this shirt on until after it's been washed. You do not need to heat set this one. All right, this one was inspired by Maker Faire actually, where I saw an interesting group from India that was doing um, dyeing, tie dyeing using dirt. And so I looked up the process and there are several traditions across the world, Japan, Africa, India, where they actually use soil as their dyeing medium. So I wanted to see if we could do that. We made a paste out of dirt. We added in some spices that we had like curry powder and turmeric and paprika um, and just kind of had a lot of fun with it. And then use that basically as our paint on our stencil. Now this you do want to let sit overnight wet with that mud on it, okay? Because you really want to give it a chance to get into um, the shirt. Technically you should wash this one in something like washing soda um, or soda ash like you would for tie dye in advance so the dye adheres better, but you can mix in a little vinegar. Some people believe that if you mix in soy milk, it can help, um, but you do want to make sure that you give it a lot of time to bind to the shirt. The more iron in your soil, oddly enough, well, chemically enough, more iron in your soil, the redder and richer your soil, the easier it's going to bind. If you don't have like soil that you can go out and dig, or you've got really sandy soil, try potting soil or just make a paste out of a bunch of spices and give that a shot. You'd be amazed at what you can make as paint out of totally natural substances from around your yard. So give it a try. This one, this is my, my one of my most recent favorites. So this is our heat transfer vinyl. 
You transfer vinyl's super popular right now, especially if you have someone in your family that's a crafter. Um, so this is a metallic heat transfer vinyl. This I did cut on a silhouette, um, on a digital cutter, and we just ironed it right on. That was super fun, especially because all the kids got to try the digital cutter and that was neat and we had different colors. And then we just added some paint and did kind of different things with it. Some people added Google eyes, all kinds of different creative things. So that's a really fun shirt to do. Last idea, our markers. You're probably gonna find as you're going through your marker collection that some of them are duds, right? They don't draw anymore and it's a bummer. You feel like, oh, now I gotta throw it out. Don't throw it out yet. There's still a lot of good use to these. So let me show you what you can do. To make a spray fabric paint out of a permanent marker, you're basically gonna take one that's dying or old and not really working, find a pair of pliers, okay, any kind will do, whatever will actually get to the end of this, and you're gonna try and just pry that marker open. This is sometimes easier or harder depending on the brand. Sometimes you actually have to go ahead and cut it open. What we want though is this. This is the felt that holds the ink inside your marker. Okay, and this is true of watercolor markers and permanent markers. Even though this marker has run dry for me, there's still quite a lot of ink left in that um, felt, okay? So if I take my bottle of alcohol that I was using earlier and just pop that felt in overnight, I can even go ahead and throw that in if I want to to get all the ink from that. Close that up let it sit overnight, all the ink from that marker will drain into your alcohol and then you can spray it as a paint. This is great for using on t-shirts where you want something to be permanent, but if you use your old washable markers, it's really fun to use on things like snow in winter <laughs> and pretty much any application where you know it can be washed away because it's non-toxic, all right? So that's a really fun way to use those old dying markers. Well, I hope you had a lot of fun. I just came back inside from spraying my spray paint shirt. Make sure you let those uh, markers soak in the alcohol overnight, okay? Because you wanna get all the ink out that you can. You might also wanna really think about using a plastic stencil for that one because it can soak the paper. All right, so have some fun with that. I hope that you enjoyed making shirts with me today. I'd love to see what you create. Make sure you post them on Family Maker Camp so that we can see your amazing creations. I'm gonna be here for the next 15 or 20 minutes live to answer questions. So if you are having any kind of trouble or you just want some advice or you just wanna talk, I am here and I would love to um, learn more about what you're making. If you want detailed instructions for any of this, um, all of it is included in the Big Book of Maker Camp projects. I'll also be putting some of the instructions and stencils from tonight up onto our project library for Family Maker Camp. So you can grab the instructions there too if you need them. Um, I will see you all again next week for some upcycled gardening fun. All right, so look out for that. I hope that you have a wonderful afternoon and I hope that you keep making.